Hi, this is Luke Sitt at Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here with this really cool miniature stoneware pitcher that's going to be in our March 2nd, uh, 2013 auction. And as you see, it's got uh, these coggled bird designs, and it was made with a coggle wheel so that uh, these designs were uh, on the wheel itself. They would hold it up against it and then spin the uh, potter's wheel slowly, and it would make uh, this really interesting design of a bird uh, with like little leaves or maybe like a holly branch or you know, pecking at berries or something, this little bird uh, decoration. And it's awesome. Uh, you see this design on jars, on jugs occasionally. Uh, I've seen it on a pitcher once, but never a miniature pitcher. This is just an awesome, awesome piece. Um, you can see there's cobalt decoration as well. And also, really interestingly, uh, you might not be able to see this, but it's a, an incised like Germanic tulip right on the front, faintly incised as well as these incised bands. Uh, it's an awesome piece, but the interesting thing about this picture is what's so exciting with our business is occasionally we'll get pieces that really uh, shed new light on American stoneware, and I believe this picture is one such example. Normally this coggle decoration uh, you would easily attribute to the pottery of James Morgan and Jacob Van Wickle of Old Bridge, New Jersey, that was founded around 1805. Um, their third partner was Branch Green. Uh, you see this uh, decoration, you also see coggle fish decoration um, and other coggle decorations. Uh, but interestingly enough, this picture looks unique enough in color. It doesn't quite resemble the Old Bridge stoneware. Maybe that is a little more olive in color, but also, the interesting thing was it was dug out of a privy in Philadelphia, uh, right on 2nd Street. Um, and very, very uh, curious about that is it's only a half mile from the pottery of Branch Green, one of the original partners at Old Bridge, uh, New Jersey. He moved down in 1809 to Philadelphia, established a stoneware pottery. And as far as I know, there's only one known signed example of his work, so it's really um, you know, we didn't know quite what he was making there. Normally when you think of Philadelphia stoneware, you think of the Remy influence that began in 1827 when Branch Green sold his pottery to Henry Remy Jr. and Enoch Burnett and then that passed on to Richard Remy and, you know, all those uh, floral decorations. But the assumption is that uh, Branch Green was probably making stoneware similar to what was being made in Old Bridge, New Jersey at the time. Um, you know, stuff like this, and the fact that this was dug in Philadelphia, only a half mile down 2nd Street. His pottery was on 2nd Street and Germantown Road. This was uh, dug near 2nd Street and Spring Garden Street, if you're familiar with this city. Um, then the third uh, very interesting piece of, uh, aspect of this piece, it's actually signed on the bottom, well, just with initial JF. And when you see uh, initials on the bottom, you assume that was of the potter. Uh, so I did research in the Philadelphia uh, directories and in Susan Meyer's landmark book. Uh, there's actually a potter, Joseph Francis, that potted uh, right near Branch Green. He was about a third of a mile from Branch Green's pottery. He was on, um, I think it was near Poplar Avenue and I think it was, it was Front Street. And he was a third of a mile from that pottery, and he was also a third of a mile from where this pitcher was dug. He was right, like he kind of made the point of a triangle. Joseph Francis, he pottered, he potted from 1819 to 1826, and he probably worked at Branch Green's pottery, and he probably made this as a presentation piece. It's very exciting. So I just wanted to uh, share this with you all today.